What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to prune models in Stable Diffusion Web UI to save you tons of disk space while keeping pretty much the same exact quality. Over here, I have Stable Diffusion Web UI with Realistic Vision selected. It's a checkpoint file, and I downloaded it from Civit AI. It's one of the very few safer work models here. Anyways, on the far right, you can see we can download a full model, FB16, 3.6 gigs, or a pruned model, around 2 gigs. What's the difference and why would you want to choose one over the other? And of course, why would you want to choose a safe tensor over a pickle tensor? Well, safe tensors can be loaded into memory faster as they can be loaded directly to your GPU, or at least skipping a lot of the CPU checks. Previously, you needed to open your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, edit the webuiuser.bat, and include this line at the very top here, set safe tensors fast GPU equals one, but I think now it's included by default. Anyways, there's one good reason to choose safe tensors over checkpoints, but the other good reason, and in fact really good reason, is because safe tensors are infinitely more secure and should contain far fewer viruses and malware. Essentially, checkpoint files are pickles, which are practically zipped files that can contain pretty much anything. They're loaded into memory and played with, whereas safe tensors are pretty much only memory, or at least very locked down resources that can't really be messed around with as easily as normal checkpoint files. That being said, nothing is 100% hacker proof, but downloading safe tensor files is so, so much better than checkpoint just from a security standpoint. If you have checkpoint models, don't worry, you can convert them using a simple model converter extension for Stable Diffusion Web UI. Head across to the Extensions tab in Automatic 11.11 Stable Diffusion Web UI, and on the Install tab, should you see SD Web UI Model Converter, it's already installed. Otherwise, head to Available and click Load From. Then search for Converter and see if you have it here. If you see it, simply click Install next to it. When it's done, on the Install tab, you should see it here. Just click Apply and Restart UI, and when you do, you should see a brand new Model Converter tab at the very top. When we go into here, we'll have a few options. By default, this is how it'll look. We can go ahead and choose a model here from this dropdown, for which I only have the Realistic Vision checkpoint here. All we need to do is select either FB32 or FB16, then Safe Tenses, uncheck Checkpoint, and run it. Yes, we can convert from a Safe Tenses back to a Checkpoint, but why would you do that? It's just faster and better to have a Safe Tenses file. So, if you're converting from a Checkpoint to a model that you're going to use for training or image generation in the future, just select FB16 and Disabled, as well as Safe Tenses, and run. This should go ahead and save you some space. But of course, Models, Stable diffusion. Here's the original file, and here's my safe tenses file, FP16. Safe tenses to checkpoint and back is pretty much a one-to-one -one file size. The original file was FP16. The FP16 that I created here is exactly the same size as the model, as it's already an FP16 file. Essentially, the floating point precision, FP, is how much memory it takes to store one number. FP32 is double the size to store one number, but it can be a lot more accurate. Ultimately, that extra accuracy means a really, really minuscule and small difference in perceivable quality, but when it comes to training, obviously more data is better. As for BF16, I haven't had much luck with this. It's supposed to be FP16, but a little bit more improved. Nobody really uses it, so I wouldn't recommend using it here. As for pruning methods, we have three options. Disabled, no EMA, and EMA only. If we choose no EMA here and run it, you should see that we lose about a gig and a half here. It's probably half the size, which is great. Should you not want to train these files in the future, you can select no EMA and be happy. That's taking all of the almost zero values inside of the model and making them absolutely zero. There's tons of very, very minuscule bits of information and things that can be simply wiped out and you won't really see any huge difference or any difference at all. For example, I took the prompt for this image here and put it into Stable Diffusion Web UI, generating the image on the original checkpoint that I just downloaded, gave me a different image, which is a little bit weird, but I assume things are just set up differently, maybe a different VE or something along those lines. Anyways, this is the image that I get. Pretty good. If we go ahead and choose the FP16 safe tenses instead, which is practically a one-to-one -one copy, just a lot safer and should load a lot faster into memory, you'll see that we get pretty much the exact same image out of it, which is exactly what we were hoping for. What about the no EMA version? Well, this is half the size, so it should be half the quality.
property, right? Well, actually, no. It's pretty much exactly the same with very little or no noticeable difference, which is great. But what about EMA only? Well, here's where things get weird. For me, a lot of these models when set to EMA only result in absolute garbage. I'm probably not using these correctly, but anyways, I would definitely not recommend choosing this. As for choosing BF16, however, these options completely break for me from the start. Whenever I try and generate something, you'll see it starts, but then gives up. That's what it is. So ultimately, when you're converting models, you should choose FB16 and no EMA if you'd like to save some space. However, if you're ever going to fine tune or train this model or even merge it with other models, you should leave it as disabled. If it's a seven gig file, more than likely it's FB32 and going to FB16 should half the size anyways. In the future, you can always re-download the model or at least most of the time, assuming the model is still there and join it with other models. And while yes, you can technically join models that both have no EMA, you might not get exactly what you're hoping for. By using no EMA instead of disabled, we're taking a ton of numbers that are almost zero and making them exactly zero, saving a ton of space. But should we add two very small numbers together, it may become noticeable when joining multiple models. So that's a really quick crash course in converting models and why you would want to convert models in Stable Diffusion Web UI. Hopefully this saves you tons of disk space. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.